Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at two-dimensional arrays. Now you guys are used to making an array which holds sort of a list or a series of values. Each value has an index position. What we're going to look at today is the two-dimensional array, which basically means it has two dimensions. So instead of every slot holding one value, every slot actually holds another array. And so what you end up getting is you end up getting something that looks like this, the two-dimensional array. Some people like to call it a grid. Some people refer to it as a matrix uh, table. Basically, it's very convenient for representing a lot of real-world problems. If you think about it, this could represent a classroom with students in every seat of the classroom. It could be seats on a plane. If you just did a matrix or grid that had two, you could have x, y value, x, y value for maybe a series of points that you're going to graph out. Uh, what you would use it for is really limitless. Um, let's just get to learn how to use the basics of it, and then we'll give you a few problems to practice using them. So the first thing is, is how do you make or declare this data structure? Well, it's just right here. Fairly easy. You just go whatever data type you're using here, or variable type, so I'm just going to use integers for our examples. You go square brackets, square brackets, there's my name, I called it M for matrix, is a new integer array of arrays. Now these two numbers here are the dimensions of the array. Now you'll notice I've picked 4 and 8, and my picture here has 4 and 8. Now this is quite arbitrary. Because in the memory of the computer, there's not actually a grid neatly drawn on paper that looks like this. So when I made this, I could have actually also just gone 8 by 4. Now in your code, you actually just have to watch that whenever you put numbers in this slot, you're not going to go past 7. And the numbers in this slot, you can't go past 3. But how you do it doesn't really matter. Now, how do you decide which way to do it? I'll give you a convention that seems to be sort of the textbooks and online examples most popular, but they like to do it XY or column row. So remember, these are columns, which are sort of like your X position, if you think of this in math terms. And then the rows, so column rows, I have eight rows here. It's sort of like your Y value, your height, up and down. And so if you always stick with that notation, you know, for the rest of your life coding this stuff in, you won't get confused. Of course, if you're using somebody else's code, you should just sort of pay attention to what they're doing in their code to make sure uh, they're using the same convention. So what can you do with this matrix? Well, here's how you can set it. I could say column three row 6. Set it equal to 99. What would this do? Well, let's go to column 3, column 0, column 1, column 2, column 3, and let's go down to row 6. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that would be that slot right there switches to 99. Notice how my counting starts at 0, just like arrays, because these basically are arrays of arrays. So that's how you set it. If you ever wanted to read a value from the grid, all you do is you just do stuff like let's say integer value equals hey matrix, give me zero, zero. Now I know you need the semicolons or I'm leaving them out, but value would be set equal to zero, column zero, row zero. Now, those are simple little routines. Let's go take a peek at a few routines here that actually fill the matrix with random numbers so we can do a few simple little tasks with them and show you some sample code. So, the first task I want you to do is go through this matrix and just fill it with random values. Now, just for the sake of neat and tidiness here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it with values that are all from 0 to 99. Now, what's going to be your strategy? Well, you could try and just go through like this. 
So you could go through every slot, next row. Go through every column, next row. Go through every column, next row, and go that way. Or you could go this way and do this. Because remember, you do have to go through individual slot by individual slot. I mean, if you wanted, you could go backwards. I mean, there's lots of ways you go through it. We're going to do it like reading a book. We're going to start there. We're going to go through the first row and go through every column. And then when we're finished that, we'll go to the next row and go through every column. So what you're going to notice here is, is just going through one row, that's one for loop. Let's go through the row. And then once you've done that, you have to repeat this for every single row. That's going to be another for loop. So when you're working with matrices, what you're going to realize is you often have the double for loop. Okay, and so it looks something like this. Now, I'm always going to go by rows first. So what I end up doing is I say, hey, start at row zero and keep going while the rows, well, in mine, I have seven is my highest row number and R plus plus. And then for every single row, what do I do? I go through every column. And so start the columns at zero, columns less than four, columns plus plus. And what am I going to do? I'm going to set matrix. And this is where you have to have the matching values here. When I made this, in my head I envisioned columns, rows. First dimension columns, second dimension rows. So when I do this here, I want to have column first, rows next. So my very first time I do it, R is 0, C is 0. So this will be 0, 0. After I go through this for loop one more time, columns will be 1. So the row is still going to be on 0, but the column will advance and go 0. 1, 2, 3. And so this is going to be the value that's changing as we go. Now, what will I set it equal to? I'll just set a random number from 10 to 9, 9. We'll show you that in the actual code afterwards, right? But you guys should know how to do that. And then I end that for loop that does the columns. And then I end that for loop that does the rows. And that's it. When all is said and done, this loop ends up doing that, 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 and it boots through until it eventually reaches the last slot. Now, does it work? Of course that works. We'll show you in the code in a minute. So let's peek at uh, some code here in our editor and see us actually using it and see the results. So what I just done there, there's me making the two-dimensional array. There's that loop I just did with you guys that fills it up with numbers from 10 to 99. I'm specifically going for two-digit numbers here because I want to be able to print it out and make it look nice. And here's a little printout routine. So print out the matrix. You'll see again that double loop cycling through everything. And the one thing to note here, I'm just doing system out print. I'm not moving to a new line. So I'm printing out the value plus a couple space bars, but no print line. So this will just stay on the same line printing the numbers out. Then when that column has totally finished going through all four columns, then I do the print line to take me to a new line and then the next row can start and then it repeats right print the column next row print the columns and it keeps going if we actually see this running here let's see the output window make this bigger and you'll see the result here is there's our matrix with the random numbers and it is four by eight and it sort of looks nice so that's one nice thing you should be able to do is print out the array Now, let's look at a few other little routines here. Sum of the first column. Now, you can hit pause here, and you can attempt to do this one on your own and see if you can get it to work. But you guys have done the summing of an array before. No different. This is just summing one of the arrays inside the matrix, okay? Or summing one index position of the arrays in the matrix. Now, since we're doing sum of a column, this is my first column right here. Now we have values in there that have been randomly picked, but how do you go through here, right? Well, you're not using a double loop. Really, you just want to go straight down column zero. So when you go to write the code for this one, let's just wipe this out here. The code for this one is just going to be one simple sweep 
right through the rows. So row starts at 0, row less than 8, row plus plus. Whoops, so that'll take me through all the different rows. Now what do I do with each row? Oops, I forgot one little thing here. Integer sum is 0. Is I want to add on the value. Sum is sum plus matrix. Now, remember my thing was column row. So what column am I on? I'm always in column 0 here. So whenever you're going through rows or columns, you'll often have one fixed value. So column 0, row, R. And that's what the loop is doing here, right? The loop is going through, and it's plunking through all the different rows. And that's really it. When you're finished, this basically gives you the sum of this column. That's it. Okay, single loop problem solve. You'll see the code here. Basically the same code we just showed you, and it gets the sum. If you wanted to do something like the sum of the entire grid, you can pause the video right now and just look at this code. Same sort of idea. The last problem we're going to show you here, uh, just to show you it can get a little trickier, I'm going to flip the matrix horizontally, so left and right. So if I actually just look at my input window, I'll show you the result of what this looks like. But you can see here, this column, sorry, the 95 has switched with the 19, right? 95 and 19. The 92 has swapped with the 92. Okay, that's not so easy to see. So you'll see here the columns have swapped, and these columns have been swapped. Okay, it's a mirror image. This is a popular thing in a lot of imaging programs, right? They ask you to flip the image horizontally. That's basically what you're doing here. We're doing it with numbers. They do it with the colored pixels. So when we go to do this, just looking at it by number-wise here with ours, column 0 has to flip with column 3. Column 1 has to flip with column 2. There's actually a little relationship here. You can pause the video and think about how you may want to solve this with your loops before you see the solution to it. But if you sort of guessed, hey, the numbers always add up to 3, you're right. 0 plus 3 is 3. 1 plus 2 is 3. If this matrix is even bigger, this is a little relationship when you go to flip. So when we see our solution code here, all we have to do is we just have to go through the rows. We just have to go through the rows, so all eight rows, and I just want to switch one side with the other, which is basically switch this with this, and then switch this with this. Repeat that with that, that with that. Repeat, and it sort of goes on and on. So when we look at the code here, this is basically it. It's swapping code, so we have our temporary variable. And you'll see what I'm swapping it with. And I'll just give you a time. You can pause the video and look to see that this does work. But column C swaps with column 3 minus C. So when C is 0, this is 3. 0 swaps with 3. When column becomes 1, 1 swaps with column 3 minus 1. 2. So it actually works quite nicely. And then there's the end of the swap there. And when it's all done, the numbers are swapped. Notice I only had to go halfway through the columns to do that though, right? Don't do more work than you have to do. And then there's just my reprint. Anyways, don't go memorize solutions to these problems because problems will always be different. But these are sort of the basics of using your two-dimensional arrays, right? How to go through them, how to go through columns, how to do some little fancy things like flipping. So that's basically it. They're not that bad to use, and uh, I won't go over all the boring examples when you can use them, but they are great in lots of situations when you want to store anything that might represent a grid, okay, in the real world or on paper. Thanks for watching. Uh, go practice a couple of the samples.